Good morning all. Do you remember these things? This is a sort of Arduino um, with displays and a, and a transceiver. So this is the receiver. Let's switch it on. So uh, the displays have lit up but they've got zeros on. That's because the transmitter's not on. This is an Arduino Nano set up as a transmitter with a transceiver unit. Let's switch it on. The relay briefly flickers. And now this thing has a temperature and humidity sensor. It is sensing temperature and humidity and transmitting it via the wireless link to the receiver. And you can see the data here. This is just a duplicate of that one. Now, although this is the receiver and has the displays on it, it also has a toggle switch. And if I press that, the relay clicks in. If I press it again, the relay clicks out. So although this is the receiver, it can also transmit back to the transmitter some amount of data. So I originally intended that this would be used in my shed and the idea being that if the, the humidity went above a certain value then this either manually or automatically could click the relay and that would turn on a fan and clear the moist air out of the shed. But it didn't really work because when moist air was in the shed, there was also moist air in the environment. And so all I was doing was replacing moist air with moist air. Uh, as well as that, the fan in the shed was extremely noisy. Uh, it could be heard from quite a distance. So it never really happened. But I'm gonna use this wireless system, transmitter and receiver, on my EVSE because the car charger part is going to be outside and the bit that's monitoring power coming from my solar array is going to be inside the house. So today what I'm aiming to do is to put this lot on here. So what I'm going to do here is turn off the receiver. Uh, now you can't turn these off with the push button which is a bit strange so I'll just slide that out and back in again. But I'm going to leave the transmitter running uh, somewhere in the room so that when I get a new receiver on my EVSE, I can uh, test it by just receiving whatever this transmitter is sending out. So I'll leave that bit switched on. So EVSE back on my desk. Now, if we take a look at the receiver unit, you can see that there's a board here called Arduino Nano dual OLED and touch and I think the first thing I'm going to do on this Nano is put an OLED on. Um, it doesn't strictly need an OLED but uh, since I'm putting the receiver on I really need something to show that we're receiving data and that can be the OLED. Now, I found another one of those PCBs, here it is. I've put some uh, connectors on it and some pins. That will go on the Nano. So this has a couple of links which if you mount vertically like this it takes an OLED and I found this one um, that goes VCC ground SEL SDA. If you put the links horizontal you can use an OLED that's ground VCC SEL SDA uh, which there are some about but this one is VCC ground so I put my links vertically. So my OLED will plug, oh not misaligned, will plug in there. Now this happens to have an SI7021 temperature and humidity sensor mounted on it because the V in ground SCL and SDA just happen to be in the same sequence. Um, but I'm not going to be using that. It won't be communicated with. Now when I plug this into the Nano, which I can do in that little six pin array, I do need to take the SCL and SDA wires and run them over to the points on the Arduino. And I have a little two pin cable for that. Uh, well, now SCL and SDA, C is the third letter of the alphabet, so orange. D is the fourth letter of the alphabet, so yellow, why not? Now this board does support the second OLED, but I don't need that, so I don't need these links. Um, the connector that this fits into the Arduino with actually only has VCC and ground on it. SCL and SDA have to come on this wire don't need the touch switch so that's that should be all we need but of course I need to put the code in this Arduino that drives the OLED. 
Also, I'm going to need a USB cable uh, that is connected to my PCB so that I, I can upload uh, code into this Nano. So that's powered that up. So here's the code for the EVSE. It's very simple. It reads the pot, maps the pot values to the limited range of values that I need for pulse widths for the car charging, and then does an analog write of that to change the PWM output. Pretty straightforward. Now I've got another window here which contains the code for that receiver when I was developing code for that shed device. So that's there and I'm just going to pinch bits out of that because I know that this works. Um, first thing I'd need to do though is make sure in my library manager that the U8G2 library is installed. And here it is, U8G2 by Oliver Krauss. And it's installed, and it's a library for OLEDs and LCDs and e-ink displays. And I'm using the 8x8 character uh, part of the library, which is the quicker, it's quicker to render on the OLED. So that's installed, that's fine. I can close the library manager. Now let's get that other window back up and start pinching bits out of here. Well, I'm going to need to include the library, which is this one, u8x8lib.h. So we'll copy that, paste it into my uh, EVSE code. Bring this one back. I'm going to need this constructor call, u8x8 SSD 1306. That's the display, 128 by 64. That's the size of the display. And then there's this no name hardware, I squared C. The name of the OLED is OLED 78. I don't need 7A actually, so, uh, well, I do need the semicolon. So let's take all of that, copy, paste it in here, put in a couple of spaces just to make it nice and neat. Like I say, I don't need OLED 7A because that's only necessary if you've got two OLEDs and I've only got one. Back to here. Uh, this is to do with the radio, so I don't need that. I do need an OLED 78 begin. I don't need the OLED 7A begin. Let's just bring that out a bit. So OLED 78 begin, which is in setup, which uh, does a set font to select the font. That comment is just an alternative font, so I don't need that. Let's copy that out, put it in setup. Oh, let's put it in after the uh, adjustments to the PWM hardware. Paste that in. Oh, we've got two unnecessary spaces. Take them out. And the final part I think I need is just an OLED 78 print statement. So set where you want to print on the display, print what you want to print, and then print some gubbins after it. So I'll take this line. Uh, copy that. We'll put that in here after the analog write. Uh, cursor to naught naught. We don't want to print packet naught because it doesn't exist. So I'm actually going to print the pot value. So let's put pot in here. And then we'll print what it actually is. So we'll put a space and it's the pot value. So we'll, we'll print a number and then just the word pot so that we know that's the pot value. Now that should be it if I've got my semicolons all in there, which I think I have. So I'm going to compile and upload that and see if it works. And yes, it does. We've got uh, zero pot on the display, but it's very dim. And if I turn that up, that goes all the way to the top pot value, which is 1023. Uh, of course, as the number gets smaller and the word pot shifts left, the T's for pot remain over on the right. So we have pot with lots of T's, but that's just aesthetics. We're not too worried about that. So yes, that means that I'm now displaying the pot value on the OLED. That's awesome. Um, maybe we could also display, because I've got three more lines on here, um, the PWM value, which if you remember goes from 17 to 29 
decimal, let's do that. So that simply means taking another OLED 78. 78, incidentally, is the address on the I squared C bus of the OLED display. We'll take a second line here. Um, and that is in cursor position 0, 0,2, which is the next line down. Copy that, paste it in here. Now, one thing I don't need is the serial print because I don't need to send data back over the, to the serial monitor because we've got an OLED now and it's a better way of seeing things. So I can take that out. I can also take out the serial begin because we just simply don't need uh, serial data transmission. Now I just need to change this. It's OLED print, so it's going to be PWM. PWM, uh, and we'll put here space PWM. Upload and uh, compile and upload that. Right, we've now got pot uh, 0 to 1023 and PWM. 23, oh, this is the decimal version, isn't it, to 41. I was previously looking at the hexadecimal version. But anyway, we've got two sets of data. This is very dim, this display. I'm going to hoik it out. And because it's blue, I, th I don't know whether it's because it's blue that it's dim. Now, I've got a feeling one of these is set to 78 and one set to address 7a. So I'll take out the first one because that'll be 78. And the way you change the address is you lift that resistor off. So the resistor's currently on 78. If you move it over to 7A, it readdresses the display. So I obviously did that on the other one. Let's poke it in here and just see if this is a bit brighter. Now we need to reboot it because there's no library information. There's no setup information on this display. Ah, that is a lot better. So zero part up to 1023 and PWM values go from 23 through 41 courtesy of the map command which we looked at in the last video. Okay so that is a working OLED that's good. Now also on this um, shed receiver that I built I've got this it's a little PCB that sits in some pins on the Nano or on this board that I made myself and it uh, houses an NRF uh, 24L01 plus transceiver module. So what I've done is I've found the PCBs for that, put some pins in, made or found another transceiver and so this, oh and we need uh, VCC and ground so I'm going to use black and white there. This plugs in there I need to find VCC, oh, the two pins just to the right of these two actually will be VCC and ground. I'll plug those in. All right, let's plug those in. Now a little blue light should come on on the radio tower board, if I've got this correct. There it is. Can you see the blue light? Oh, I'm not sure. Anyway, that's lit up. I can see the blue LED. Um, so the radio tower should now be working. Now we need to port over some code related to radio reception and see if we can also get that. The transmitter incidentally is still running so all I'm proposing to do is get some uh, radio data coming in and displayed. It won't relate in any way to the EVSE. It will just simply receive the, I don't know, the temperature perhaps that's being sent out by the transmitter. Let's do some coding. Um, so once again just need to make sure the library is installed. This one is the RF24 library um, by TMRH20 and this is a, a library for NRF 24L01 brackets plus modules. So that is installed, that's fine. We can close the library manager, bring in my other window and what we need here is the include library RF24 H, copy that, paste that in. Let's have another line. Constructor call is RF24 radio. Now pins 9 and 10 are the chip select and oh what are they? They're the two pins that are used in addition to the SPI to make the radio work. But anyway, 
<laughs> All I know is that uh, this line works, so we'll copy that, paste that in there. We need a construct. Oh, we need these um, a constant, which is a pipe number. Now that's so that you can put a code on your transmissions, and you have to use the exact same code on your receiver, otherwise it won't receive anything. We've got a packet which has a float, and that's because the temperature from my shed sensor used a floating point for the uh, temperature and humidity. And there's a Boolean for the payload, which is the relay on and off. But I'm just going to copy that line in its entirety. Copy, paste that in up the top here. And what else do we need? We need a setup, which is the radio begin, open reading pipe, set data rate, enable ACK payload, and start listening. I need all of that lot. Copy that. Now that's all in setup. I'll put that, since I'm doing this second, I'll put that after the OLED stuff. Put it in there. That's fine. And finally, we need this thing in loop which is while radio available, read packet, size of packet, um, write and acknowledge payload. We don't really need that, but we'll do it anyway. I don't think it's going to work if we don't. Oh, we do have a declaration for payload. It's up there. What the value is in it is, I don't know. But anyway, we'll take this while loop. I think it needs that bracket there. Copy that and put it in loop. Oh, should I put it after the OLED? Why not? Let's do it. Should work, shouldn't it? Uh, okay, that should be it. That's the end bracket for the while loop. This is the end bracket down here for the uh, loop. Well, I think that should work. Let's uh, compile and upload that and see what happens. Oh, of course, that won't work because we're not actually displaying anything. So on the next line down, let's take another OLED display command, uh, copy that, paste it in. We'll display it first, doesn't really matter because this runs in a loop. Doesn't matter that we display it before we've actually received it, it's all sequential. Uh, okay, so on line four, we will print, oh, it will be packet zero. Uh, we don't need volts, we actually need degree C, so I'll just put a C in there. Uh, I might put a space in actually. And how did that get there? I probably made a mess of it, so let's do that. Okay, so on the next line down, we print the packet that comes in and then a degree C. If I could remember how to do degrees, I'd do it, but I can't. Right, let's. Oh, it's uploading still the previous one. Actually, I think we can just override that, can't we? Yes, compiling sketch, upload that, see if it works. And that does work. I just had to change something. I pasted in an OLED 7A command, and of course that wasn't declared, so it said undeclared variable. Uh, OLED 78 is the one I want. Oh, that's flickering, isn't it? That's odd. That's something to do with the camera's shutter rate. But anyway, there's the uh, line of data. Uh, we're getting 60.35 degrees Celsius. Now that's coming from the transmitter that has a temperature sensor on it. It's completely irrelevant to this project. But it just shows that the radio is receiving data and putting it on the OLED. Now, the next step, of course, is to take the pot off this board and put the pot on the transmitter so that I can have the pot at a remote location from where this is and get the pot value transmitted over the radio displayed on here, but also to drive the uh, CP line driver. That's the purpose of this, so that I can change the pulse width that the car is receiving uh, originating from the potentiometer but the the two parts of the system will be in different locations that's what i aim to do and of course later on the evse will live outdoors the solar monitoring will be indoors and so there will be this radio link between the two so that the car's uh, charging power tracks the power of the solar panels but I think for today, just to get the radio receiver working and the OLED working, that's good enough for me. So I'm going to call it there. Cheerio.